I greet you in the name of the Lord. I pray that all of you are doing well by God's grace that you are fine. Yeah, mm. I'm on here to, to speak about something which is very important to understand on how to believe God and how to move with his spirit. Um, you know that I don't speak unless I am moved. Um, so what moved me to come on and talk about this question, if you have a steadfast spirit with God. So in other words, my question to you as a son, as a daughter of the Most High God, do you have a steadfast covenant with God? You see? Um, so what led me now to this question or topic? Um, the Spirit of God that is residing in me has been grieved. I have been coming across on Sunday on a message of a sister in Christ with her plea um, to help her. It's not the first time that I have seen such kind of behavior. And it is, let me say this, it is nothing wrong to help people especially those who are in faith. It is nothing wrong to pray for them. It is, I mean, it is nothing wrong to bless them even financially. But there is something wrong about the attitude or especially when you have been called by God as the prophet of God. Now, this is a very loving sister um, that I really have to rebuke, you see. She has been called, according to her own words, um, as a prophetess or a prophet. But when God calls you, he will take care of you. I told you last time, especially he will take care of his own prophets. And I want you people to stop misbehaving because you are grieving the Spirit of God. You are provoking God. You are sinning against your Maker like the Israelites. Now, she brought the topic uh, by saying, or a title, um, the request or something, of the prophet to the Lord. You see, when you have a plea, when you have a request, and you have it unto the Lord, then this should be your secret between you and God. People of God, I beg of you, this kind of behavior, beggarly attitude must stop. It is grieving the heart of the Father. What am I talking about? Now, let me go deeper. I'm talking about those children of God who claim to be the children of God and more than that, to be anointed by God, but they have not the faith or are steadfast in the spirit, in the covenant with God. And I was so grieved, which is the Holy Spirit that grieved in me. I began to cry, to weep, to groan and crying and crying and began to prophesy and speak in the atmosphere. How can you limit my God? How can you provoke God unto anger? 
again, she did not really something wrong by asking people of God, can you help me out? But there was a spirit that was not right, that, that showed if you truly are called by God, especially as the prophet of God, you can't go and beg. You don't do that. And this system that I am really rebuking openly now, you got to stop this. I know it's hard for you. Sister Yasha, stop it. I know you have problems. I know it's hard for you and you are laboring. But I think I have to correct this kind of behavior in the body of Christ. You are provoking your maker. Listen. I am tired of those people who go on YouTube or any other platform on social media and provoking the Lord to anger and begin to beg. If God really sent you, and I'm not even really saying calling you because you have to answer the call, but if you are really sent by God, he will equip you. He will take care of you. And I have observed it now over years, and I haven't spoken, but I have to address it now. And I want you people to stop provoking God to anger. You are asking people for money as a child of God. You tell them exactly how much you need, and you tell them your expenses. People, are you okay? You say you need money for a new laptop because you have to continue your ministry in YouTube or your phone got spoiled. And now you ask people to donate. I don't know what to think really of this. Maybe someone can help me out in the comments and let me know if this is this is how it should be again i'm not saying you should not ask for help speak unto the heart of people of to bless you and bless your ministry it is time to stop how can you be telling god or me and people that you are ministering to, that you trust God and you are prophesying. But you yourself, you don't believe that God is able, that God is able to take care of you, that God is able to meet your needs. What about, let me correct something here in the body of Christ. It is time to stop, to stop putting everything on God. No. What about working? Why don't you go and work? But you think God sent you to minister. You are sitting the whole day around doing nothing. Or waiting on God to provide for you. I mean, what is this? If God took you out of job, it's a whole different matter. If God has spoken to you and tells you to stop working and trust him, then there is no need for you to worry. But what you are doing is you don't trust God. Not really. And you help yourself or in other words, you try to help God on how to help you. This has to stop. I beg all of you, stop it. Stop forcing the hand of God. Stop becoming as a child of God, a beggar. You are begging for money. This is sickening to the core. 
It grieves the Holy Spirit. It grieves the Almighty God. It grieves His prophets. You can't do this. And especially, like I said, sister, if you say you have been called as the prophet of God, wait a minute. Why don't you trust Him that He will send the money, the provision, the help without you speaking a word? This is what I mean when I say people of God, stop fooling people. Stop thinking that everyone is really called as the prophet of God. People, I want to plead with you again. It is time for you to stop. You cannot be, and some of you are so, I don't know which word even to use, but uh, you force, in fact, even people to bless you. You put out pictures there, especially you mention it in a big way. You post it that you have birthday and everyone is obligated now to bless you. What is wrong? What is happening to the body of Christ? When will you people learn that you have to stop this beggarly mentality? Your spirit is not upright with God. You are helping yourself out. And this is not acceptable. You are provoking God, your maker, to anger because you say God cannot help you. You are like the stiff-necked Israelites. You are a rebellious people that is rebelling, resisting God. I want to take you through Psalm 78 on how the Israelites have behaved despite what God has done in the wilderness for them. And this is what the children of God are doing today still. Despite God blessed you yesterday, but today you are in need and you think God cannot do what he did yesterday. How? The same God who delivered you before, now suddenly you think God is no longer able to deliver you today? That you have to go and help yourself like Sarah? What is wrong with the body of Christ? You have become pervert people that is grieving God, that is making him unable even if he wanted to bless you but he can't bless you what will he bless your laziness your foolishness your beggarly mentality what do you expect god to do for you on in which way to bless you when you take care of yourself how can he provide for you when you go and beg people to donate, you beg people to give you money. You beg people, you open up your private life and tell them, so I need now 50 whatever dollar because I have to cover up my expenses and I don't have anywhere to sleep. I understand that. I totally understand. But this is the trial. This is the test. This is the refined fire. You have to go through it if you claim to be a prophet and allow God to deliver you and allow God to take care of you without opening up your secrets, your suffering. 
So how do you want God to bless you? The problem is, I'm going to speak about the crushing of the blessing of the Lord. That many of you are telling God on how to bless you or through whom to bless you. So therefore, you are crushing the blessing of God. It might be not the money that you need now, but God might send you a prophet, like I told last time. So the very sister now who is asking now for money and claims to be a prophetess, I have personally last year was led by the Spirit of God to contact her and pray for her to break the yoke of delay and poverty. But guess what? Arrogancy and pride doesn't allow her, permit her to get back to me. So therefore, her suffering is continuing. And now she's asking for money. Ugh. You pervert generation. You stiff-necked people like the Israelites. Even though God took care of you over the years, even God blessed you, healed you, delivered you, provided for you. It doesn't matter. You forgot about all his wondrous works. Why? You see that your spirit is not steadfast with God. Your covenant with God is not steadfast. Because no matter what happened to you, even if you sleep on the street, which God might allow, might not allow, but it's up to him. But if you go ahead of God, there's no way that God can step in. And I want to take you, like I said, Psalm 78. And please hear the heart of God. Please I hear what God has to say. The Spirit of God is grieved about the beggarly mentality of his children, provoking God to anger like the Israelites. Impatient people, fleshly people, carnal people. You have become beggars. And you wait God to do a miracle, to drop the miracle in your lap while you are sitting down doing nothing begging for money and donations. Are you okay? How can you be a prophet of God and do this? Who told you? Now let's go. Verse 17, this is the very situation. Now here, King David is, by the Spirit of God, reminding the people of God on what they have been doing. So David, King David is here naming all the goodness of the Lord. But yet, in, I'm going to read from verse 17. And yet, and they sinned yet more against God, against him by provoking the Most High in the wilderness. And they tempted God in their hearts by asking meat for their lust. Verse 19. Yea, they spake against God. They said, can God furnish a table in the wilderness? Behold, he smote the rock that the waters gushed out and the streams overflowed. Can he give bread also? Can he provide flesh for his people? Therefore, the Lord heard this and was wrought. So a fire was kindled against Jacob and anger also came upon against Israel. Israel. Because they believed not in God and trusted not his salvation. 
You see, this is the big problem. The biggest problem of the children of God. Despite the miracles. As the psalmist King David goes on to mention all the miracles that the Lord did, even in the wilderness. He's saying here in verse 25 of Psalm 78, man did eat angels' food. He sent them meat to the fool. He caused an east wind to blow in the heaven, and by his power he brought in the south wind. He rained flesh also upon them as dust and featured folds like as the sand of the sea. And he let it fall in the midst of their camp round about their habitation. So they did eat and were filled, for he gave them their own desire. And still, verse 32, for all this, they still sinned and they believed not for his wondrous works. This is terrible. This is heartbreaking. I'm talking about the great I am. I'm talking about the God who is able to turn the barren land into a fruitful land. I'm talking about the God of the wilderness and the desert that can make and turn unto the rivers of living waters. God gave him, gave them not only water gushed out of the rock, but he in fact answered their cry for their lust to be um, met. He dropped meat, meat, flesh, and they were, they, were, we, uh, they were filled and they ate. And guess what? They still, still provoked God, still didn't believe God, still began to murmur and complain and sinned against the God the more. Jesus help us. I want to read with you. I want to continue because see what they did. When he slew them, then they sought him. And they returned and inquired early after God. And they remembered that God was their rock and the high God, their redeemer. Nevertheless, they flattered. They did flatter him with their mouth and they lied unto him with their tongues. You see, this is what people are doing. They come online and tell you, oh, God is so good. But their life doesn't show, doesn't prove, doesn't speak of that God is good. Because the next moment what they do is they go in unbelief and, and begin to please their own flesh and take care of themselves. It's a problem, people of God. It's a problem. Verse 37, for their heart was not right with him, neither were they steadfast in his covenant. But he, being full of compassion, forgave their iniquity and destroyed them not. Yea, many times turned he his anger away and did not stir up all his wrath. For he remembered that they were but flesh. They were flesh. We have to stop this. We have to stop to have this beggarly mentality. We have to stop provoking God to anger. 
We have to stop. We are confessing with our mouth that God is almighty. God is great. Yeah, he can do all things. Nothing is impossible to him. But this is just your religious spirit. Religiosity is killing you. Your spirit is not steadfast with God. You are not steadfast in the covenant with God. Why do you do this, people of God? Why do you provoke God to anger? Don't you think the same God who was able to give you salvation? Don't you think the same God is not able to feed you? Don't you think so? Don't you think that God who healed you yesterday is not able to heal you today? Is it not the same God who took you out of your desolation? Is it not the same God who took you out of that club, clubbing of that perversion? And now the same God cannot heal you? Is it not the God who gave you salvation and redemption? And now you say, how can he provide today for me and pay my bills? Oh. Listen to this. I'm going to read Psalm 30, no, sorry, 78. We are still Psalm 78, verse 30. I skipped it on purpose. Listen to this. They were not estranged from their lust, but while their meat was yet in their mouth, the root of God came upon them. And he slew the fattest of them and smote down the chosen men of Israel. Why? Because of their complaining and murmuring. God provided for them. God fed them. And they still ask them. They still ask the Lord. Can he furnish a table in the wilderness? Can he give bread? You see. This is what the people of God are doing. It's dangerous. It's dangerous. And it is grieving the heart of God. I tell you the truth. I was, I was, I was grieved. I was weeping. I was the presence of God hit me. I was on Sunday on my knees. You see why I, I am different. You can be in church, a church goa. You can lead. I told you last time a crowd, but you can be dead. You can be spiritually dead. Nothing happens. To you or for you. Why? Because your spirit is not steadfast with your maker. It's not. Nor do you have a covenant with him that is steadfast with God. You see, a covenant, I told you last time, a sacrifice can consume you or bless you. It's dangerous. You are playing with God. You are playing with fire, the consuming fire that is able to devour you. And the way God does it is that you are barren. The way God does it, that nothing works out for you. Why? Because your spirit is not steadfast with him. You don't make him and allow him to be your provider. In fact, some of you have become so religious, so blinded by church leaders that you sit down there for hours and you wait for a miracle. My God, my God. But let me tell you something. This is never going to happen. Mm -mm. No. Until you understand who God, your maker, is, until you accept it for who he is, no miracle. The miracle doesn't define God. Oh, katalama 
Bakate, hear me. The miracle doesn't define God. In other words, I'm saying to you that the miracle that you are waiting for or having rather or think to have does not mean it's from God. But it is God who defines the miracle. Oh, hear me. Kalima Zudaba, Lebo Kobalida, Masuka Bagaleda, Labaka Zokobada, Zegeleke Lakato Bakate. It is God who defines the miracle, not the miracle God. Because even the devil can create a miracle and give it to you, but it will cost you your life. So, why do you provoke your God to anger? Why do you do this? Why? 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 You are good to clap in church and dance. When, this, when, the, when the pastor is ministering and preaching, everybody of you jumps. Oh, the same yesterday. God is the same yesterday. God is the same today. God is the same forever. Oh, really? Do you believe what you are saying? Do you believe what you are confessing? Let me tell you this. After church, you have clapped and danced. You go back home. Fire gone. Spirit dead. Nothing. Why? Because your spirit is not steadfast with God. That's a problem. God will show your mercy in the atmosphere. But the presence, the atmosphere must be within you. You must believe God. Suddenly, your child gets sick. Suddenly, there comes a shaking in your life and you stop what God has called you to do because you are angry with God. So God can no longer provide. God can no longer heal the child. This is a problem. So, Again, do you have a beggarly mentality? Are you a beggar? A beggar of man that goes around and ask and ask and ask. Is it good to ask? Yes. Is it, is it okay to ask for help? Yes. But in which way? And what you say, it's important. It's important. How? Because you cannot be a son of God and you are not led by the Spirit of God. It's impossible. Once again, I plead with you, stop doing this. You are provoking God to anger, to come on the platforms and asking for money to pay your bills. You can't survive. You don't have to eat. You can't pay the school fees. You can do this. You can do that. You don't have a bed to sleep. Oh, listen, if God has called you, if God has sent you, he will provide for you. Please, please. And the very sister, According to her word, a prophet of God. I don't doubt it, but listen. The prophetic gift, okay, fine. You are asking, but if God calls you, don't you think he will provide it for you? He will take care of you? Do you have to do this? And besides, I personally, I have blessed this sister. I sowed into her ministry. I did that and I kept her in my prayer. 
But this time around, mm -mm, no way. Why? Because she despised my invitation as I was led by the Lord to pray for her. So she never replied. Therefore, carry your yoke and burden all by yourself. Since you can help yourself, please do so. But I personally, I'm not going to sow into your ministry anymore. Or no, the only seed I can sow is I can pray for you. All right. I did that because I was led. And I do understand that people are suffering. I do understand that people are struggling. But people get up. I plead with you. Do something. Stop being the whole day in the church thinking and waiting for a miracle when God has created you to be a miracle. The provision that he has deposited in you, what are you doing with that? And you tell me God has called you to do ministry? And you tell me God has called you? Really? So don't you think that God graciously will equip you and give you all things that pertains to life according to his word? I don't know what to think of this. Maybe some, someone can tell me. I have nothing against it to ask people for help. Okay? Really not. But as a child of God, you have become a beggar. Anything happens to you, you shake. Anything happens to you, you beg. Anything happens to you, you cry. Anything happens to you, God uh, is no longer good. Uh, you begin to fight God. You begin to blaspheme God. You begin to, in disbelief, uh, you know, your heart. Listen, your heart is not upright with God. This is the secret why many of you are suffering and nothing is happening. Because the very God you are calling upon, he's not going to hearken unto your voice. Because you despise him. You despise his word. You despise his provision. You despise his leading. You despise the leading of the Holy Spirit. What do you expect of God? This is why it is written that the children of the world are wiser than the children of light. You go, you carry your legs to church. And sit down the whole day and watch and listen unto a man that is exalting himself and puffed, puffed up and lying to you. And you still wait for a miracle. You go wait until you die. You go wait. Nothing is going to happen. So what are you doing with the gift of God? What are you doing with the skills, wisdom, understanding, knowledge that God has given unto you? Are you working? Are you creative? Has God inspired you? Do something. The problem is this. My Bible tells me those who are giving to the rich, rich man, they shall surely come to want themselves. And this is what is happening to you people. This is the beggarly mentality, the lust and the flesh. Your motive, remember what I ministered concerning your motive, why you want something. Why you want something. Blessings, Brother Daniel, Evangelist Daniel. So this is the problem. Stop it. Stop it. I beg you, do something with your life. Stop waiting for a miracle. Stop waiting for a miracle. Be the miracle that God has created you to be. Get up from your laziness and sleep and slumber. Do something what God has called you to do. See, God said in his word, I will bless the work of your hands. Of your hands. Do something with your hands. My goodness, do you really think the whole day that you are listening unto those messages and prophetic words is going to help your life? No. Those liars are exalting themselves. They are not exalting God. 
Stop that beggarly poverty, poor, 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 poor mentality. Stop it. You need to trust God. The same God who gave you that breath, you are breathing. Don't you think God graciously is able to sustain you? You see, when you hear men and women of God, I'm talking about those who have been empowered from on high, they know what they are talking about because they have been there. They suffered. They paid the price. So there is a price on it, but you can't go nothing true, nothing. You bear nothing, 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 nothing. One small shaking. Hmm. Whoa, come and see. No, people, it's not done. So I came on to stop you, to plead with you. Stop provoking God to anger. God is taking care of you. God has kept you alive. Even this year, even now, while others are dying, while others have been taken out, while others are suffering from any kind of sickness and disease. But you, you are complaining, 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 murmuring, murmuring. Oh. So, again, please allow God to heal you, help you, provide for you. Your spirit to be steadfast with him, all right? No beggarly mentality. Stop begging people. Stop begging people for money, for donation, for seeds, for anything. How will God provide for you? How will he step in if you go ahead of him? God is able to listen to you and hear your heart. He will meet your needs but not according the way you expect him, the way you expect him to bless you, to answer your prayer. You see, many prayers are not answered because there is no trust. There is no faith. And faith, when I talk about faith, is I'm talking the very person of God, Jesus Christ, who is the author and the finisher of our faith. I'm not talking about religious faith. Because not everyone has faith. Faith is the gift of God as well as the gift of discernment and so on, but by the same spirit. So I pray that this helps you to get more stronger in your relationship with God and your spirit to get steadfast. Come rain come sunshine, no matter what happened, even if the whole world falls apart, you will be still steadfast with your God. Because the calamity that is hitting the earth, the world, you will be not able to escape. You will be not able. In fact, if your spirit is now shaking and not steadfast with God, you are the first to deny Christ. Let me tell you, you will be the first to deny Christ. Why? Because your spirit is not steadfast with God. The covenant with God is not steadfast. You are not strong. If someone tells you now, and which the devil already did, and offer you money, you think this is the blessing of God. But what you did is you took the blessing of Satan. You see, it's a problem. So I leave this. Please stop provoking your maker. Stop provoking him to anger before the wrath of God comes upon you. Allow God, if you love Jesus, allow him to be whatever you want him to be in your life. If you want him to provide, give him the chance to provide. If you want him to heal, give him the chance to heal. If you want him to be the father that you never had in your life, then trust him and throw yourself into his arms. All right? Stop begging. I plead with you. Stop grieving God. Thank you for listening. God bless.